Hello, we're here with Gary Strauss today. And hi, Gary, how are you? I'm good, Isabel, how are you? I'm very well, thank you for asking. Can you tell us a little bit about you? Um, I am a teacher and a healthcare practitioner. I've been in the healthcare industry for close to 40 years. I own my own school. I train teachers uh, to teach in programs that I've created and I train teachers to hold their own programs in the work that I do in polarity therapy and craniosacral therapy. And uh, I have a private practice. I work with people every week have for many, many years, and um, I live in Topanga Canyon, that's where we are, mm -hmm. and I travel and teach a great deal, a little bit, I wouldn't say all over the world, but between Japan and Europe and the U.S., a lot in New York and California and Arizona, Switzerland and uh, Kobe. Japan. What's the name of your school? It's called the Life Energy Institute. And anybody can sign up for the classes? Yes, uh, classes at all different levels, open to lay people, bodywork practitioners, psychotherapists take our class, acupressure, acupuncture practitioners take our classes. You have continuous education also? Yes, we have uh, CEUs in uh, body work, again, for nurses and for um, licensed acupuncturists and body workers. And they can just go to your website and check how they can qualify or they can sign up for any of the courses? They can. They can go to the Life Energy Institute or they can go to even, uh, we have a local school in California and we have an international school. And our international school is lifeenergyinstitute.net and it has the connections to all the work that we do all over the world. Fantastic, yeah, and you teach in IPSB anymore? Actually, now we acquired IPSB, the Institute for Psychostructural Balance. We actually own it. It's part of our Life Energy Institute. It's under our umbrella. Yeah, IPSB has been a mind-body bodywork school for over 40 years in uh, Southern California, Los Angeles area. And uh, we just acquired them in this year. Uh, we've, all, we've worked with them for 35 years here in the LA area. They've been our sister school. And now we merge them. And um, we are teaching an integrated approach to body work as a healing modality. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I've taken a lot of classes with you there. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. We started there. Uh, when I came to LA, I started teaching. And I decided to, and I have in general, anchored my work inside of body work schools and colleges and centers throughout the country. It seems to be the best place to hold my work. And in New York, uh, what's the school that you teach in New York? It's called the New York uh, Open Center. Also been around for over 40 years. I started teaching, I've taught there every year since it's been open. It's a nonprofit institute. It sponsors everybody in the world. When I was just there in New York, Deepak was there and just so many people. Go th every work that exists on the planet goes through the New York Open Center. It's a great place. Fantastic. And right now I teach an integrative approach to craniosacral therapy. That's the program I have at that, at that school, at that center. And in Arizona? In Arizona, we are part of a um, degree granting college called Southwest Institute of the Healing Arts. And they grant AOS degrees in body-mind therapy, in um, all different things. I mean, so many modalities. They're a huge, spirit-filled college. 
And at the core of that college is our entire program. They have every class that we teach, close to 1,000 hours of classes. And we have, that's the most, one of the most robust programs in polarity therapy in the world. I don't, I don't know that anybody, there are other, in Switzerland they have things like this, but in general it's very robust. We have teachers coming in from all over the world to teach there. And teachers I've trained hold the program there and train. There are classes every week. There's a clinic every week. Two days a week you can go get polarity and or cranial therapy sessions in our clinic. In Japan, you go to Japan, I know Japan. Yeah, I've trained a teacher. Um, it's the uh, it's the energy it's the polarity energy school of Japan. Uh, and the director, the owner, is uh, Kyoko Hayashi. And she's one of my teachers that I've trained. But she's, you know, her, she's a teacher in her own right. And she has a, she's had a school there for 12 or 13 years. And I helped her begin that school. She has, she created the Japanese Association for Polarity Therapists. And she's also now bringing her work to Australia starting to teach there. So I teach in her school. I've taught in other people's schools. There's one other school there I've taught in. Very little, though. It's located in Kobe. Yeah. And what happens? You do classes and um, gatherings do in Hawaii, am I correct? We do retreats okay. uh, almost every year, uh, either in We've done a lot in Hawaii on the Big Island, and we've also done retreats, uh, many of them in Switzerland over the years. This year we've done them in Canada. Uh, we've done them sometimes in California or in, done them in New York. I mean, done so many retreats of our work. And what happens in those retreats? Anybody can go? Or is it a teaching retreat? Or? Yeah, anybody can come to, like I'm doing a retreat right now in Japan, and people are going to come from the United States. And anybody can come, they're open. We take people from the beginning and we take them into our work. And it's a journey, really, every time we do this. It's a journey back to yourself. It's their renewal. Uh, this one is inside of a Buddhist monastery, so very special. And I'll be teaching holding space which I don't do very, I actually don't teach it in the United States, I haven't taught it in the United States, I've taught it once in the United States at Omega Institute. You're the founder of the program, right? I'm the founder of the school, I'm the main teacher. I've trained just about everybody. And can you please tell us a little bit about the holding space, that's fascinating. Yeah, so I've been Let's see. So I've been in the healing arts for close to 40 years, and I've been working with people energetically in the work of polarity and cranial. And, I, and holding space emerged out of my experience. Uh, I wasn't taught that as a word even. At one point I thought I discovered the word holding space. Other people found it as well, though. When I found that out, I was a little disappointed. But holding space is a way of relating where Sometimes I say holding space is a way to optimize the potential of the moment, whatever the moment is. In many ways, holding space is opening up doorways of energy and potency. And when those doors are open, then nature is restored. And things have the greatest amount of potency and possibility according to their intention. I would say holding space restores nature. If you, I mean, that's a really nice statement. You feel so good, yeah. Yeah. It, for people to understand, because if you say holding space, and you know, people uh, nowadays it runs around and, and, and no much awareness of the amount of space they cover or, or the, that it is space. What would you say to them? Well, the, f the first thing that comes to my mind when you say that, um, there's a term in the traditional literature called bedside manner. It's the way that a doctor listens or 
attends to their patient bedside, the way they are at the bedside. And in the research, they show that doctors with good bedside manner, their patients do anywhere from 30 to 70% better than doctors who, who don't have good bedside manner, or even worse, doctors that have bed, bedside manner. And they found that when doctors have a bad manner, their clients don't get well. They don't do very well. So something, it's about a way of being that creates a kind of air, if you like, that is um, good for your biology, good for, your, for who you are. So f we talked about it before. Something happens definitely with time. In fact, I wrote a, you know, I wrote this ebook called Holding Space Method. And I have another book that I wrote with Lynn Dennison called Holding Space Time. And we think that uh, when you slow things down and you do it, actually, if you just slow things down, the space will open up around you a little bit. You will leave the movement of life and you'll come back to yourself and you'll, you'll, become, you'll move into a state of being, is what we say. And most of the time, we're not being. We're very occupied and engaged in the world. Normal, it's okay. But we're not being enough, that's what's not okay. And when you're being, it, I know that we could measure this electromagnetically. Your feet chakras open up, your head chakra opens, your field, your energy field literally opens up when you move into being. When I've been in Aboriginal, I've had some opportunity over the years to hang out with Aboriginal people. And when they're intact, when they haven't lost themselves to our culture, they're usually in a state of being. That's their natural state. And when you're with them in the beginning, when I've been in some cultures, I've been like, okay, I want to get going. And they would look at me like I was crazy. And I would go, oh. And I would sit back. And I would learn, when I learned how to be with them, I was like, oh, now I'm being. And I moved out of, it's moving out of your agenda. And it's moving in a state of presence in, mo in present time. If you have thoughts, you're not your thoughts. Most of the time, people are their thoughts or their what. We don't know this, but the more that we engage in things, we become those things, and we don't know. So we've become what's around us a great deal. We become our cars, or we become the news now. Everybody's into the news. So everybody's a newscaster or a reporter or a politician. And, that's, and so when we're being those, th those things aren't real. We're being created things, things that are created for us a little bit. So when we do that, we lose a certain kind of, we certainly lose balance, but we lose our being to those things. We lose our energy. And um, our body is made of energy. The world is made of energy. As much as it's solid and physical, it's also energetic. Yeah, I realize that, um, that for the most part, and I, I tend to do, and I catch myself, uh, we are outside of our own space. Okay? We, we're just ahead of ourselves. And it's a, it's right. a, it's a, a saying that I learned in the States is that uh, you jump the gun. But when you jump the gun, the bully will get you, you know what I'm saying? Yes. It's just like um, being outside. And, and we all own that space, that sacred space where it's the field of all possibility, right. where we can create anything we want. Uh, we can be one with everything. And for me, what you say about uh, holding space is uh, knowing that we are one, that we are connected. Mm. So we don't have to be doing this or doing that or, or, or telling somebody what, because when we do sessions like I learned you do a session, you get a session. It's usually, we're so connected, we're interrelated. So, important to understand that this space 
we don't need to do anything. It's a lot of freedom there. Mm. For me, it feels a lot of space. Mm. A grandmother will do that with a child. Mm-hmm. It can be that she may be no doctor, mm. but the child feels better That's just right. by being in that space. Because it's got a chance to be yeah. who they really are. Right? Yeah. And I find this so fantastic that you, well, you've been my mentor, my teacher for close to 30 years, that I'm so grateful to be that you're doing this because right. all things pay. And if you were to say it in lame words to somebody, mm-hmm. it feels to me like listening is a good home space. Listening without, without your motor going or analyzing or judging it, right? Right. Just be. Or you could say receiving. You know, I'm, if I'm receiving. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of different ways to get there. Sometimes you can get there with thoughts. Or you can get there with a meditation. I found that when I do a session, uh, the work that I learned, polarity particularly in the beginning, that I would go there when I did that. That's, kind, that's partly what attracted me to do that work was because I felt that my body opened up. And people don't know that their bodies aren't open. They're inside of what they're in. You know, though, when you open up, if you go to nature, that's like the classic. If you have been away from nature and then you get there, and, a- and after a little while, all of a sudden, you start seeing the trees and you start seeing things around you, and you come back to your humanity. And, and then you're in a state. Now, <clears throat> that state to me, it's a state of being. When you do that with another person, so when you do it for yourself, if anybody who goes to nature, if you get there, like I think sometimes people go on vacation, but they don't get there. They brought the city with them, and they brought everything with them, and they're still doing it. So they, could, they were doing it here, but now they're doing it on a beach community somewhere. But they're doing the same thing. They're still there, but they're not completely there. They took their life with them. And we love that. We want to be able to do that. But sometimes you need to be able to go somewhere and be there. And when you get into being, that's why people like to travel, I think, cause, and go out of what you're in. Because it's hard when you're in the motion of your life to just get out of it. You need to go somewhere else and kind of settle out and let nature take over. When nature takes over, I, I believe that you're, I think everything breathes energetically and pulses. And our bodies do that, and the earth does that, and all things do that. Even the table does it. Everything has a frequency and an energy. When we are in our normal, everyday life, and where our life is very, to me, two-dimensional, it has a lot of, we have to get so many things done. To get things done, you have to be focused on really in two planes. You have to get in your car and go somewhere. Like this morning, I had to get my tires changed. There was a time, I had an appointment, I had to get there, I had to leave it, we had to fill out some forms, they had to do it, I had to take it and go. That has a, that's a task, and it has a lot of two dimensions. It doesn't have a lot of other dimensions to it, and rightfully so, because if you're driving your car, you want to get there, and if you're trying to get tires, you want to bring them home. But when, you, when you're, so then, so that's normal. So then, if I do a lot of that, or anybody, then I lose my space above me and below me and around me. I even lose my relationship to people. I become more in the doing. And there's so much doing going on that we're losing. And it's like music. We're losing the higher notes and the lower notes. Our music, our digital music, has lost its range of frequency. That's a reflection of us being so geared within a certain kind of frequency of being. And we're reaching a limit of the value of that. And to, you know, so in this day and age, being able to open up and unfold your energy, being able to come into peace, peacefulness will, is a state of being that's like holding space. So being able to do that, 
is like um, having a full range of vitamins in your food. Mm -hmm. It's opening up more of who you are. And when you become restored in that space, you usually lose your attachments to the things around you. You care much less about them. They're, everything's going to move anyway in its own time, but they become less, they don't become so important, right? Mm -hmm. And so nature does that, this work does that, meditations do it, words do it, sounds do it. And we're, I think a lot of what is happening in our world, in the, in the movement that we're in, I don't know what you call it anymore, at one point they called it the New Age, but it wasn't very new, I thought it was old, actually. It was just old things, really. I think it's old. I think this is an older way of being. Our ancestors lived their life more like the way we are now, I think. So, so many different ways to get here. Tai Chi will get you here. Good yoga would get you here. Good things in Qi Kung will get you here. Meditation will get you here. Mm -hmm. So now I think before you touch someone, you should be here. Before you start to think about helping another person, you should be here. When you help somebody from this space and you don't really have an agenda, something happens for them. They get the gift of where you are. To me, that's holding space. When I'm in that space and then I give it, and I could, I found people ask me to hold space from that, for them from a distance. They send me emails or they send me text, whatever whatever's going on in their life, and I just go into that state and I extend it to those people or situations. And I found oftentimes the further people are away, the better it works. Because mm -hmm. that's what it is. It's not here, nor there, nor it's anywhere. Not. It's a neutral, for me, it feels very neutral. Being in neutrality, which is so rare, right? Yes. There's no judgment, there's no color, it's, it, it just is. Yeah. Like your spirit, it just is. Mm. So you allow somebody to be in spirit space. Yeah, and you give them a, um, a reference, and you're a resonance of that and they can pick up on it, and they can use it. They can use that consciousness, or I think it's really a channel or a field. They can use that field and channel, and they can, in, they can enrich their channel, their field as well. And it's the physical and spiritually, uh, you know, it's like a retreat. It's the space that you... It is a retreat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. This this is, and it's so rare, because it, it just can be nowadays, because it's such a value of who you are, who, what you own, what you're doing, who's, who you know. It, 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 the values are a little confused, and in this place, you don't have to have none of that. Your spirit is naked, and it just is fine. How you come in is your own space. It's just is. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And um, what would you say for people to be able to source a little bit, little tools for people to source this space? Well, the first thing is um, to find nature that you can commune with. Uh, the classic thing is to connect with a tree. But any nature will do it that you feel and usually you'll find that nature that you're called to, if you go there, you'll start to open up. And if you just stay, the, even if you just sit or you stand or you walk, if you just do that, you'll open up. So that's the first one. Um, I, I have a morning meditation that I do, that I you know, definitely train people in or teach them to do. I just get them, and I, I think it's best done in the early morning, like between 3 and 6. But it can be done any time during the day as well. It's, done, it's really good when it's dark, when you're in that dark time, because everybody's sleeping around you and there's less static. But it's a, So having some kind of a meditation or a practice that my practice has cultivated, you know, having a meditational yoga practice, 
Tai Chi cultivates that. What can people do? And this is something, so I've been a part of the explosion into the alternative healing arts over these 35 years. And we have trained so many people, millions at this point, I think, in our culture alone, who know how to touch other people in a positive way, who know how to help them open up in their body. And I think probably the most important thing is that we find a way to open up our body at least on a weekly basis. And my idea when I talk about health care is everybody should be taken care of. You, we were taught, you know, we don't want to wait till we have a problem before we're taken care of. Our culture is in a crisis, right? We're, we can't, our culture has come to a place where we can't afford to live. Our culture can't afford itself. We can't afford all the abundance that we have. Nobody can anymore. We're reaching a place where all the things that we have are going to become meaningless a little bit. And what we don't do is we don't take care of ourselves and we don't take care of each other. And now in the government, they want to not take care of anybody. They're thinking, let's not take care of people anymore. It's kind of nutty. But taking care of each other, when you take care of somebody, you get well. I haven't been ill in my life. I'm not ill, and I haven't had, I have no aches or pains in my body. I don't have any real, I wouldn't say I have any real problems, and I haven't had any real ones. And if I did, I got well. And I do get a session every week, or two, or three, and I would get a massage, or I would get an energy session, or I would get a cranial, or I would get a acupuncture, or I would go to any kind of practitioner, that, even my chiropractor, I love the guy. I just like going to see him. Or my MD, I would go see her, just to hang out with her, because I like her, because she's a good person. So I think if we take care of ourselves, we're better. And the more we become human and take care of ourselves, the more we, the more we become a human being, and the more we hold space for ourselves, and then the more naturally we can hold space for other people. It's kind of recycling at energy, you know? compost what it doesn't serve anymore and recycle the rest and because we are like a well of energy all the time I mean we have you know that inside going up the spine coming up to the front and the Chinese medicine is very clear that you know mm. and uh, uh, keep that that oiled up and with you know with it the rhythm that it has uh, it's all about the pulses and polarity and and cranial sacrum, and since I learned it, I am so fascinated how everything pulsates, you know, and has the little universe, its own universe, because people don't realize the amount of work this body does when we sleep 24 hours. It's not like I need to take a break, the heart doesn't, listen, I'm going to right. the bathroom sometimes. Right. Yeah. It's on, 24 right. 7, 20 you know, tons of blood a day, a healthy heart, which most of it is not. So, this holding space, it feels so right. You can hold your space for you, for the rest. Since we're interconnected, the more we do that with ourselves, everything benefits around us. That's why I like my dogs. Mm. They just chill, they just mm. got their whole space. They don't care if I own a car or if I look with a lab, nothing. How can we do that? How can we just not concern so much about what somebody thinks or I need to look or I need to own to be? Because that's not us. Nothing belongs to us. We came in with nothing. We live with nothing. I, th I think... First of all, we should probably make friends with that. We should be like, okay, so the, some of this life that we live is a little crazy, right? Or it's a little disconnecting, or who are we get lost in life. So then, as much as we get lost in life, we should have the idea that we need to find ourselves again. That would be really, that would be very interesting. 
if we just had it the way, you know, our old religious traditions said you should find yourself every week at least. You should take a couple of days off or go to church or go to temple or go to, or maybe you should go every day, right? But you should keep finding yourself because we do keep getting lost. It's the nature of it. It's okay a little bit, right? And we have to come back to ourselves. So just that idea of like, okay, I got to come back to myself. Having that thought would probably lead you into things that would bring you back. I know if I ride my bike at the beach, I find myself there. I don't even have to do a meditation. But if I don't have the beach and I want to be there, I use the meditation or I do Qigong. We have our own cranial Qigong that we do or we have our own polarity exercises. I think you know that. Mm -hmm. I'll do some exercises. And the more, if I've done, and listen, I don't have to exercise for three hours. I could do it for three or four minutes. And I'll be right there. It'll open me up and I'll remember, oh, you have to open up and you have to come back. And you have to let go of and put down the things that you normally hold, that you're working with, that you're trying to achieve or be. We all want to become manifest and expressive in this world. It's our meaning to be here. We didn't just come here to meditate. We came here to be a part of the world. And, so, and everybody has a reason for that and a purpose about it. That's beautiful. And we should do that, but then we should let go of that. And we should restore and come back to ourselves. And I love what you said, what you resonate with like how our resonance affects the world around us. Because I think our world changes based on the way we resonate. And our experience changes on the way that we resonate. If we want to have a different experience, we have to change ourselves. Because we always say, well, this one needs to change, the planet needs to change, right. that change. And right. then I find that we continue to do what we are not changing in ourselves. Uh, and one thing that it helps me that I learn in the memory of some meditation that I do is um, the question, this is a question, is uh, hmm. who am I? Yeah. Who am I? Right. It, it, no judgment to it or no answer. Right. It's just I think if you in that moment go inside and you say to yourself, who right. am I? Who am I? It's... um. It's a little scary for most part for people because it's like we have this identity that is linked to, oh, I own this, I am, if I look pretty, I am, or whatever the story is. Different parts of the planet, different story, right? The whole thing is a story, the story we make. So I watch perception and awareness because it writes my story a lot. <laughs> So the last moment, the last past, no, no existing no more. Isabel at 10 years so way gone. A different people, we shapeshift. And I learned that since very little with the Indians. Mm. That you can shapeshift yourself mm. to this space, mm. or holding space, a lot. Of, if you realize you shapeshifting in who am I? It's a space for me, mm. for me, it's a mm. space. Because it's, it's naked, right? It's mm. like, there's no story on who am I. Right, there's no story in there. Yeah, well, I think it reminded me of this. So we do this meditation in cranial. And it's basically, and the first consciousness is I am a little bit. When you say that, who are we, you know, mm -hmm. I am, it's a good, it's another good language, so many words, right? And we like to kind of uh, come back into the center of our brain and the center of our spine and ground. And just that alone, just that I simple idea, if I come inside, if I think there is an exterior to me, there is a near to me, there is my skin, there is my body, there is my muscles, there is my bones, there is my inner brain and spine. If I think like that, I start to go into that space, almost no matter what, wherever I am, whatever's going on, if I just think I have a field of energy, I have a body, I have tissues, I have bones, I have organs, and I have an inner core, 
and I think about that inner core within that, I start to move out of the consciousness of whatever I've been engaged in, and I move into a, a feeling of resonance or frequency. That's the experience of it for me. That's actually what I do usually in my meditation. I just go inside to that space, and I'm just there. When I'm there, I don't have frontal cortex thoughts. I don't have those. If I do, they are fleeting. They don't hold. So when I'm in, that's the space that I've cultivated the most with people, that inner, inner, middle, middle space. Yeah, it is interesting to see if you want to do x-ray or MRI on who's driving the body, who's mm. thinking, who is aware of that outside. Because in a class, my mother told me, somebody, because I used to love drawing eggs, I said, one egg, 50 people, this egg is different egg. Perception is very different, right? Exactly. Right. So the thing is that you take x-ray, you can measure this, that. Who, who is the one that has the brain? It's not the body. Hmm. Right? Right. It's not the body. No. It's the, who am I? Yes. It's based on that. Grenade, just let in the who am I hold that space. Hmm. And I feel right now the room went like this. Yeah. It did, totally. Mm. Yeah, I can barely uh, think. Becomes like that. So, from our perspective, from this, then we do our work. So we, and it doesn't, after you do this for a while, you just go into this space, right? right. No, it's no, not no, that hard. It no, yeah, no, because it doesn't have anything. Right. The hard part is when we go in here and we start, la, la, this, that, this, that, we get a little lost. Yes. Do you think we can, um, do a little bit example of some meditation of holding space or whatever you want to teach a little bit so people can understand uh, a little more how we're going to introduce them to your teachings on the holding space. Sure. I can a do a little guess. meditation. Yeah, so the, the first thing to do is to be comfortable. Very, very important that you're comfortable in your body. And some people prefer to do this lying on their back. I like to sit forward on my sits bones because it bends the low back. It opens, opens the curve in the low back, and that opens up your spine and the layers around your spine called the meninges. So it allows energy and fluid to flow through your spine optimally when your belly comes forward. Um, so, and I have a tilted chair, so my chair actually comes forward a little bit and down, and I can sit on my sits bones really easy. And then um, the next thing is to be in amusement because uh, this is not serious, and being serious stops energy flow. So, being a little childlike and not doing anything too much, whatever I say to you, don't try and do it perfectly. So being easy. Um, and then what you want to do is become aware that you're an energetic being, like you have a field around you. And so saying hello to the space around you is really important. So you just say hello to your space. You imagine that you have a field and that each of us are field beings. So you say hello to your field. You say hello to your body within your field. And then you say hello to your interior of your body, within your body, within your field. Each one of those are different layers or different humors. So we have a field, we have a body, we have an interior. Within our interior, we have a spine and a spinal cord. And now, so I said this is a contemplation to me, even more than a meditation. I like the word contemplation. 
Because if I just think about these things, then they become for me. I, I don't even, the word meditation for me has lost its meaning. It's given up to the word contemplation. So I think I have a field, I have a body, I have an interior. And then within my brain and spine, I have a inner core in my center brain and spine. In my center brain and spine, I'm filled with cerebrospinal fluid. And our, our ancestors thought that our spirit lived in the center of the brain and spine. And in cranial, we say this, we, esoteric cranial, they would say the same thing. Your spirit finds its way into the center of your brain through the center of the top of your head and descends down through the back of your brain into the center of your spine, down into your spinal column. And this is just anatomy in some way, right? But if I think field, body, if I think spine, if I think inner core, if I think fluid, energy, essence, then I'm vibrating more because I've isolated that out. I've defined it. And then if I think about the earth and being related to it, my body, like my feet chakras open up when I do that, my root chakra or my, the bottom of my butt and my coccyx and sacrum start to open to the earth beneath me. My legs open to the earth beneath me. And I start to organically exchange and breathe energy with the earth beneath me. And I want to think uh, that I want to give up whatever I need to let go of and I want to restore and take back whatever I need that is essenceful and that will restore me. And so that's a contemplation of you, many parts of you, right? You as your essence, you as your body, you as your field of energy. in exchange with the earth beneath you, or with the space around you, or even with the space above you. So that's a basic orientation. The center of your brain, the language we use is I am. Down into the center of your spine, the language we use, I am here, or I am embodied. And then into the earth we think, not only am I here and embodied, I'm grounded. I am here and I am grounded. That's the language of it. Those words are good. And the art of contemplation allows things to open up around whatever you're contemplating. So I can feel my field, I can hear my energy now, or I can sense my body and my field. So uh, Gary, you're very good at this, and so kind, and definitely very giving. Uh, What's your offering for the planet? Because this is mm. global. What we do is global. Right. What would be your offering? Well, I think that um, the Hopi elders said around the millennia that we should be prepared. They did that things were going to get much quicker and that it was going to be like a swiftly flowing river and you don't want to hold on to the sides and you want to go with the flow of energy and you want to recognize that that's the nature of the evolution of our planet and our world. Our um, electromagnetic field is changing on the earth right now. If you Nobody follows this science very much, but it's out there if you want to look for it. Our electromagnetic field has been wobbling and recently been more charged on the earth plane. And we're living in very charged moment of our growth as a planet and a being and an entity. And it's very easy, I think, to become absorbed in the charge of things. And it's less common to then leave that and come back to yourself. I, um, when I grew up in this work, I always wanted to be a part of the world and contribute to the world. And, and I was very active in environmental, energy, environmental issues 
earlier in my life. And I realized that uh, for our world to change, it has to be an internal change, that people need to change, that people need to find their essence in themselves. And I think whenever anybody finds that little bit that that makes a resonance go out in the world, and people think, they tend to think that they're insignificant, and nobody is insignificant, everybody is important. And when one person changes their energy, it affects the world around them dramatically. When people come to me and they say, oh, my daughter has a problem, my son, I work with them and they change their energy and their daughter and their son change. The world changes by you changing. So instead of looking externally at what's going on, or in addition to looking externally, for people to take time out to be with themselves is probably the deepest thing I could say to anybody. That when you do that, when you take time out for your internal life, and the quality of who you are and you think about, the, just thinking about that, or just being off on your own, that you change your frequency and you change the world around you. And I think the great, there are great, you know, our world, it looks like there are, and I'm sure in every age people would say, oh, there are terrible things going on. And there are so many great things going on. We live in such a great time of people taking care of each other all over the planet. We don't see that because we see the louder things or we see the you know, Hollywood of things, which is a thing, but it's a very small thing comparatively. And people really do care about each other. And thinking like that and walking around like that and caring for people and especially caring for people who feel disturbed or who are off and not entering into that mind of them or us or that kind of thing and thinking that we're all part of the same thing. Those are the best gifts I could give to anybody. Mm -hmm. So I think, and I tell my students this, I think that I, I, I mean, look, I love giving and helping and doing, and I'll do anything for anybody, anytime, and we should do, we should help each other. This is a great time to help each other. I want to help people more now than I ever have in my life because of the time that we live in. So helping each other out and taking care of each other and taking care of yourself, probably the deepest thing we can do to move the energy and the evolution. We live in a speck, in a moment. Evolution is an eternity. If we live from a sense of eternity, we live a very different life. That's yeah. probably the thing I could say that would be the deepest. Thank you so much. Yeah, that feels really right to me. You know, it's no beginning, yeah. no end. No. Because uh, it, it is so much duality and. Um, so much is like, oh, it's going to end, it's going to... Whatever is born is going to die. Yeah. Whatever is created is going to end. Yeah. Impermanence is a given. It's a guarantee. Huh? Hmm. And it's the ticket to ride. Yeah. Like the Beatles says. <laughs> yeah. And maybe one more thing, like... To me, every day is brand new. I think mm -hmm. when I wake up, I say, oh, how am I going to create myself today? How am I going to find my attunement in life with things, really? That's my prayer every day, find my attunement in life with everything. Yeah, setting an intention. It, for me, every morning I set an intention. My intention is to make a difference yeah. to anything. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Namaste to you. My pleasure. So lovely to be with so you guys. I love you. Very sweet. <laughs>